When we have a loved one that dies, or a friend that dies, and we're left in the will, <laughs> we are really eager to get a hold of that will. It may not be but 50 cents, but bless God, we want to read that will. We want to just be sure we're getting our portion of what's coming. And, and really, uh, these promises of God is a will that's been made out to you. And, and they're, they're, there's good, they're good things there. They're rich things there. They're, they're wealthy things there. But if you don't get a hold of them, you see, God can't help ignorance. You know, God is intelligence, and God cannot bless ignorance. God can help ignorant people to become, become sharp, all right. Uh, but you have to know something to get something from God. And it, it's a beautiful thing that when people come to know God, their whole inside just light up. You know, they just light up and become great in God. And, and uh, whatever God does is intelligent. And God works with intelligent people. And he can't do great things without that. And some of our knowledge has to be, what do these promises mean? Are they for us? And if they are, why don't we get busy and start using them? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Now, this is lesson number 12. That means we've been talking about promises for quite a while. And the, these, this lesson is related to the promises regarding your relationship with fear. Now, there is no doubt about it uh, that fear is the greatest enemy the world has. A man is afraid to plant a crop, so he has no, he, he has no harvest, you know. A man is afraid to go into a new town, so he has no job. Uh, a young man is afraid to ask a young lady to marry him, and so he dies an old bachelor. Well, tomorrow you'll understand what I mean, I'm sure. It won't take you too long to catch on. Uh, you can't be motivated by fear and get anywhere in this world. You got to know that you know and be sure that you're sure and put the thrust in there. Can you say amen? amen? Now, in your opening statement regarding fear, I'd like to say that the Bible is a book forever, eternally against fear. You can just take the whole book and say that book is against fear. Fear is a monster. Fear strikes in fury against families, against persons, against communities, against nations. In, in the pagan and heathen world, much of their life is just dominated by fear. And, and they create all kinds of uh, little uh, things, uh, little dolls to put pins in and potions that they hide under trees. And these are supposed to have great power to hurt people. Now you and I both know that they don't have any power, that it's a lie. But they believe it's that way and they, and they live according to their fears. I'm mean, glad you're living according to your faith. We don't live according to our fears. We live according to our faith. And, and millions are being tormented in the world that we live today. Now, there are at least 365 fear knots in the Bible. And, and we, we have a little book. I don't know whether we have it in print right now. It says, a promise a day uh, will keep the devil away. And if you will just take the promises of God and, and take one every day. The doctor says it's an apple a day. I just soon make it a promise. Uh, one, one of God's promises every day will make things straight. If you believe it, say amen. Uh, fear is a painful enemy. It brings with it dread, anxiety, and so many things that makes life an unhappy situation. Now, in 1 John 4 and 8, was our opening uh, word from God uh, in his word, related to fear. 1 John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love. Now, you know, there's a world of comprehension in that one little clause, that there is no fear. In, in the perfection of love, there's no fear related to it. You could take that into your work. If the work that you're doing, that you're consumed with love for it, there's no fear related to it. In your family, when you completely love your family, there's no fear in relationship to your family. And so anything that is completely motivated in love has no fear relationship. And so where there's a fear relationship, there's a lack of love there. You believe that? All right. There's no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear. Perfect love casteth out fear. That means when you have uh, complete love. Now, God is love. And so you can say, complete God casts out fear. God is love. God doesn't have love. You have love, but God is love. Uh, God has power, but God is not power. 
I sure am glad of that because power is dangerous when it isn't motivated by love. And so fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Isn't that great? You, you, you got all the answers right there in that one verse, you know. You say, I'm afraid. Well, honey, you're not made perfect in love. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> when you got the fullness of God in there and, and God brings in his, his nature in there, his nature says you can't be afraid. You're not afraid to die. You're not afraid to live. You're not afraid to work. You're not afraid to stay home. You're not afraid of anything. Even the big bad wolf, whoever that is, he don't exist either. And so fear is used in the Bible more than 500 times. 365 of those, God says, don't fear. And so he's trying to get you ready for it. In your uh, first point in your outline that you're holding there, it says that we should not fear God. Now, we are told to fear God, but there's a relationship here that I must get across to you. That when it comes to respect of God, that is something else. Uh, you may call it fear. You may say, I fear my daddy. You don't really fear him. You respect him. And, and uh, that respect is very interesting. For example, when I was a kid, if I had done what I was told to do, if I had brought in the stove wood, you know, and had a stack by the, by the stove, uh, we, we always had a wood stove, you know, uh, to warm up everything with. And if I had done my work, I was hanging on the front gate swinging, you know, when he came home. <clears throat> but if I hadn't done my work, I was very difficult to locate. I was, in a, I was either behind the house or under the house, or, or, or I was under the bed. I was out of the way, to, to, just so I wouldn't remind him of anything. And, and so the, the fear had to do with transgression, you see. It, the fear didn't actually have to do with my daddy. Now, the same is between you and God. When things are right between you and God, that fear is beautiful, wonderful, glorious respect unto God. But if you're living in transgression, then you know that you're going to be disciplined then that's another thing. We want to live in harmony with God. Can you say amen? In 2 Timothy 1 and 7, it's another golden text of this, of this whole system of fear. <clears throat> it says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Now, uh, how many believe the Bible? The whole Bible? Nothing but the Bible. All right. And then it says that God didn't give anybody any fear. So that means that fear has an origin in another area. The, the, the first place in the whole of the Bible that we discover fear is when Adam and Eve had transgressed against God and God's presence came into the garden and they went and hid. It says, I was afraid. That was his confession. Adam confessed, I was afraid. And so fear was born of disobedience. Fear was born of transgression. Fear was born of deliberately, volitionally, of being against God and... and and, and that is the beginning of fear. It says here that God doesn't give anybody fear. And then God says it is a spirit. You know, when there's a spirit, that means you can't locate the thing. You know, it, it, uh, it can be here and there and, you know, it just, it just keeps moving around. And that's the way with fear. You, you get to be a fearful person and you're afraid of the storm and you're afraid of the lightning, you're afraid of the thunder. And the first thing you know, you're just loaded with fears. But it says that God is not the author of them. He says here that God has not given us a spirit of fear. That thing that just runs all over the whole total human spectrum, uh, hurting you in every place. Then he says, but God has given us three things. You ought to underline them there. This is 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And I'd like to supplement a few words if you don't mind. But God has given us a spirit of power. Not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. Now, the word power has to do with authority. It has to do with two things, energy and authority. Uh, it's first, authority. God has given us a spirit of authority. That's the reason we speak so positively, because we know. You say, we know. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. He's given you a spirit of authority that you know. You speak it, and it has to be done. I will be telling you about a, a witch doctor in the morning service that I interviewed this last week, one of the most prominent witch doctors in the whole of Africa. And uh, when we got through with the interview for an hour and a half, I said, do you feel anything remarkable or unusual about me? I hadn't told him who I was yet. I just asked questions. That witch doctor said, well, Reverend, 
he didn't know naturally that I was a reverend. He says, behind you is a light that I have to observe. And says, you are a very strong man. He said, I would never cross you. That's something. That's something. God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a spirit of power that's even recognized by people that worship the devil. He said, I wouldn't ever want to cross you. And, and so God has given us a spirit of authority in the world that we live in today. Don't you wish we used it? And in all of your business, you just spoke with affirmative authority from God. This is the way it is. Of course, it has to be that way. Yeah, don't make any mistakes about it. Uh, it always, uh, the authority has to also be truth. Now, men's hearts would just stop beating. And they would die of excitement. They would die looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. Now, 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 now neighbors, I, I believe we can everyone see that we are approaching that point today. Our world that we're living in today just does not know what to do with the situations that arise. Uh, I mean, our governments of the world are as nonplussed as anybody else today. And we're approaching that time when men's hearts would fail them for fear, looking after those crazy things that are happening in the world, just like it's happening right now in your newspapers. You see it, you see it every day. It says, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That means the powers of authority, Washington, D.C., London, uh, Berlin, uh, Paris, and the whole world. It's going to be shaken. The powers of the earth are going to be shaken. And God himself is going to make himself known. And people are going to know that he is God. But I want to tell you something. We're not of that bunch. We don't fear. The same Jesus said, when you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads and yeah, don't be afraid. But rejoice. You say, why? Because his coming is so near. Jesus is coming back. Our redemption is near. So while the world is afraid, we are not afraid. So when the world trembles, we shout. We're going to become the most misunderstood people. They're going to say, why don't you have a long face? Don't you know what's happening in the stock market? Say, no, honey, I've been reading the glory market. has nothing to do with me back there at all. My success is in Jesus and my blessing is in Jesus and let it flip or flop. It don't make any difference to me. I still have all the, all the promises of God on my side. If you know it, say amen. amen. So they're going to fear the future, men and women. You know we've come to that place right now. The millions of people right now that are afraid of the future. Oh, the atomic bomb, atomic nothing. There's not going to be any atomic bombs exploded. You say, Brother Summer, what do you mean? They're making them? Yeah, playing with them. You know what a man in Alaska told me before World War II? He said, Summer, all the smartest thing in the world is to give every man in town a six-shooter and tell him to put six bullets in it. And I said, why? He said, well, nobody's going to shoot anybody because he don't want to get shot. But I said, if you want trouble, just let one man in town have a gun. Somebody's going to get shot in a hurry because he's the only one that's got one. And I want to tell you something. God is going to take care of this earth, and man is not going to do it. God's got all the judgments for this earth, including Russia, and, and God don't need any help. He can do it. And so don't be worrying about we're going to end up a cinder, not until after the church is gone, and it won't, be, it won't be these nations of the world, it won't be Russia that'll do it. Hey, God's going to take care of it. How many are glad for that? I tell you, we certainly are. So there are those that fear the future. There are those that fear evil. Look in Proverbs 1.33. Whosoever hearkens unto me shall dwell dwell safely, and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. There are people in our country that are afraid to go out at night. They're afraid to go for a walk. They, they, they're afraid to take their pocketbook out in public. They, they actually live a life of fear, a fear. I'm, I am glad that I don't live in fear. I don't live in fear. I'm going to live as long as I live, and then I'm going to die. And I'm not... And I'm not going to be in a hurry either way. It don't make any difference. If I go to heaven today or next Sunday, what difference does it make? I'm going. You say, but uh, don't, don't, uh, do you want to die? Well, yeah, I want to die. That's one of the experiences I hadn't had yet. I want to have them all. Don't want to get cheated. Well, you say, how about the rapture? Well, that's all right. I'd, I would take that too. But it don't make any difference. I'd just soon to go the other way. I've heard so much about death, I'd like to see what it's like. How many like to see what it's like? 
Well, you're going to find out. The Bible says it's sure. It, the Bible says it's an appointment. I don't want to miss any appointments. You know, we, we preach one thing and then go and live another. You know, we preach that we got a home in heaven and most of us don't want to go. We want to stay, well, anyway. We are not to fear the society that we live in. We don't live under the dread of fear. We can only die once and it'll be in God's appointed time. And we'll laugh while we're doing it in Jesus' name. Uh, the psalmist also said in Psalm 23 and verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now that's as bad a place as you can go, the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will fear no evil. You say, well now, wait a minute, David. Why is it you won't fear an evil? He says, thou art with me. God's rod and God's staff, they comfort me. I imagine, I want to ask him what those are and I get up there. His rod and his staff, they're God's. And he says, they are comfort. They're comfort to me. All right. The word, of the word of the Lord here says in your point number four, that we should not fear men. In Isaiah 51 and 7, it reads this way, Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness. Now, that's, that's us. That's us. The people in whose heart is my law. That is us. You, you know it is. Fear ye not the reproach of men. How you like that? Fear ye not the rebuke of men. Fear ye not the, the sayings of men. Fear ye not, it says, the reproach of men. Neither be ye afraid of their revilings. If a man curses, he curses you, let him curse. Smile at him. Say, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. We are not going to fear men. Can you say amen? amen? We are just not going to do it. In the book of Hebrews, Away in the New Testament, chapter 13, and verse 6, it says, So that ye may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Now, that's clinched it, didn't it? Yeah, that was Hebrews 13 and 6, and that clinched it. He says, I will not fear what men shall do unto me. Aren't you glad for these promises also? We've been giving you promises on all kinds of beautiful things in your lives. And, and now here is the promises related to the monster to that monster of fear who wants to destroy your happiness, destroy your peace, to destroy all the blessing that God wants to bestow upon you. And I want to tell you something. If you got loaded with fear, God can't bless you in faith. The two don't dwell in the same house. You believe it? Yeah. You got to get one of them out of there. And, and the fears want it all to get out. And, and, and let us keep faith on the inside. And all the people said, Now, in Isaiah 54 and 4, it says, Fear not. For thou shalt not be ashamed. You see? And, and that's what God wants us to know related to fear. He says, don't be afraid. You shall not be ashamed. Now, I thank God for that. Trouble can come to you. People can whisper against you. People can tell lies against you. God says, fear not. Thou shalt not be ashamed. Keep your head up. Keep singing. Keep praising the Lord. You're not going to be ashamed. You're not going to be let down. God is with us and we're with God. Are you glad for it? In that same book of Isaiah, and chapter 26 and verse 3, he says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. He trusteth in thee. God will keep you in perfect peace. You believe it today? Whose mind is stayed on God? We keep our minds on what we're doing. Because we trust in him. And that's the reason we don't have to be afraid. And Jeremiah said it this way. In Jeremiah 39 and 17, he says, Thou shalt not be given under the hand of the men of whom thou art, af a, whom thou art afraid. Now, uh, in, in this scripture, in, I, in Jeremiah 39, in verse 16, Ebed, Ebed Melek was a despised Ethiopian. He had been kind to the prophet Jeremiah, according to the word, and God promised him to preserve him from those that he had feared, because he was a foreigner over there. Thousands were slain by the Chaldeans that came against them, but this Ethiopian was not hurt. He was not hurt. And he says, And thou shalt not be given in the hand of the men of whom thou art afraid. So Jeremiah was telling this man, You've been a friend of mine. You've been a friend of God. You've been a helper. You won't be delivered into the hands of those men of whom you've been afraid. So don't be afraid of them anymore. God wants to say the same to you and to me. God is not going to deliver you into the hands of wicked people. God's going to keep you sovereignly free and gloriously happy. <laughs> Glory be to God. How many ready for a double portion of it? Glory. I am too. 
Glory be to God. God always told his men that he loved not to be afraid. From Genesis to Revelation, that's his story. In Deuteronomy 1 and 17, it says, and it indicates that God indicates that a command that the judges of Israel were not to fear men. When God established a man into a judgeship, in Deuteronomy 1 17, one of the things that he told the men that were to judge Israel is that they were to not be afraid of men, that they were not to fear men. And if you're going to be a success in this life, there's one thing that you must know. You must not be afraid of men. You must never be afraid of men. A man is just a little man. He's just a little worm on his way to eternity. It don't matter whether he's a prime minister or whether he's a, a local businessman or a, or a farmer or what he is. He's just a man. And that we are, to, we are to respect our God, but we're not to fear men. If you know it, say amen. Isaiah said it this way in Isaiah 12 and 2. He says, I will trust and I will not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. <laughs> Have you ever heard uh, that when you get scared, you ought to sing? Have you heard that? Yeah, have you ever heard of the man that was whistling in the dark? You know? And, and the word here says, I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength. He is my song. Just sing unto the Lord. It, it'll, keep, it'll keep your heart beating right. And just sing unto the Lord. And Joshua 10 and 25, it says, Fear not, nor be dismayed, but be strong and of a good courage. Israel was not to fear giants, wall cities, or anything else as they marched over there, and the, their leader could not be afraid. I mean, if Joshua was going to be afraid, they would never win. And so God said to him, Joshua, fear not, do not be dismayed, be strong, be of a good courage, and that's the victory. Now, God is saying that of our lives today. I don't know what's in front of you. I don't know what's in front of me even. I don't know what's in front of our church. I don't know what's in front of our world. I just know this. Fear not. Be not dismayed. Be strong. Be of a good courage. And God will be with us. Are you all going to believe that? Are you going to believe it's just for me? Well, I'll take it all if you let me have it. But I don't need it all. I want to share it with you. God does not want us walking afraid in the world that we live today. Uh, the man Daniel in the Bible was a man unafraid, as you know, a great prophet of God. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 19, the angel spoke to him and says, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. Maybe that is the scripture that reveals this man, Daniel, the greatness of him. I, I'm sure his greatness uh, would be more than you can, uh, you know, realize at, at, this, at this very moment. Uh, for example, in one chapter, he is the prime minister of Babylon. <laughs> in the next chapter, he is the prime minister of the Medes and the Persians. Now, how he ever made a transition of power, I don't know. You know, the Bible doesn't tell us. It'd be nice to get up there and say, Daniel, in one chapter here, you're, at the top, you're the top man in Babylon. And the next one says, and I was in Shushan the palace. And that's the capital of Persia. And, and here you were over there talking to the kings of Persia and leading the kings of Persia. And in the chapter before that, you were leading the kings of Babylon onto that devastating night when God rode upon the wall and the empire died. The night that empire died. Uh, here was a man unafraid. God put that in his heart. God said, don't you be afraid. Don't you be afraid if empires change, ride the crest of the wave. Be the top man in that one. And when it dies, be the top man in this one. Are you still here? Yeah, we don't go up and down with the Democrats or Republicans. How many are glad for that? We just keep sailing on. We belong under, uh, under a new banner, and that banner is the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you glad for it? David said in Psalm 46 and 1 these words, God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is a very present help in trouble. So isn't that great? Isn't that tremendous? Look at it again. God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is a very present help in our troubles. Then he says, therefore, therefore will not we fear? I just won't be afraid. I just refuse to. Though the earth be removed. Now, the world hasn't gone anywhere yet. You know, the mountains are still there. 
the seas are still there. It's only man that's agitated. He said, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Now, brother, he had it, didn't he? Are you with me or not? Yeah, he wasn't just bothered with politics. He said, I just want to tell you something. The whole world can go kaput, and I'm going, to still, I'm going to still say God is my refuge, God is my strength, God is my present help in my time of trouble, and I'm not going to be afraid. That ought to take fear out of our hearts, shouldn't it? We, we need this message in the world today, likely more than any other message that the world has need of today. There are more people fearful and more people hurt by fear right now than ever before in the history of the world. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10 and verse, verse 31, he says, Fear ye not, therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows. He had just got through telling them that a little sparrow, God knows there are millions of them. And you go to some countries and they've got ultra millions of them. And he says, not one of them falls to the ground unless the Father knows about it. And he says, if God is careful to understand little sparrows, he says, you, a creature that will live forever, you, a creature ordained for eternity and immortality, you shouldn't have any fears. Therefore, you're worth more than many sparrows. Don't be afraid. The value of one human person is greater than the total value of planet Earth. You ready to vote on that? What does God think of wars and we slaughter men when one of them is worth more than planet Earth? God said it. You say, why, why is that? Simply because this world passes away. Humans live forever. They don't ever die. 